So guys, recently I did a video where this guy had sent in a question where he said that his coaches were really resistant to leg locks and he was asking should he leave his gym or should he stay in the gym even though he can't do the things that he wants to do. And I told him that he should be able to practice leg locks. And a lot of you guys commented in, on that video that you were saying that leg locks are really dangerous. Like you agree with me that he should be able to practice what he wants to, but you said that leg locks are really, really dangerous. And I want to kind of touch on that idea because I used to hold that idea myself back in the day and over the years that's changed and so I want to sort of give you guys some things to think about. This is my lovely assistant, Mr. Adam Wilson. For those guys that are saying that a leg lock is more, is like inherently more dangerous than any other submission, like every submission in jiu-jitsu is dangerous, right? Every submission like arm locks and all these things, they all have the potential to, to maim and injure someone in a really bad way, right? Um, let's take a really uh, common submission that I don't hear anyone having any qualms about, and that is an arm bar, right? So if I get an arm bar here, when I get it, I make sure I pinch my knees, I put my heels to the mat, I bring the thumb or the hand down, making sure the thumb is up, right? I do this all within control. Now, once I get here, I don't pull the arm and pop it, right? I hold here and exercise control. And Adam, again, he's like, I'm caught, so he taps, right? That's it. Okay, same thing with the Kimura. You want to talk about one of the most dangerous submissions? Probably one of the most dangerous, if not the most dangerous submission in my eyes, is a Kimura because you're attacking the most mobile joint in the body. No joint moves like this. And if you damage it, it's never quite the same. So, I mean, when, you know, again, we get here, when we do a Kimura, there's different variations, but the same idea is always here. We pull out, up and over, whatever. And when we finish, we finish with control and we go slow, right? So the leg lock is no different, right? If you think about all the submissions that we do, we get to the point where we can really do the damage and then you stop. When we're in training, now if you're in a fight situation or maybe even like in a really heated battle in a tournament, that changes, but in training, we take care of our partners and we make sure that they, they walk in uh, healthy and they leave healthy, or we try to do our best, right? Accidents happen, but we try to do our best. So let's say that I get Adam in a really like hairy position here, boom. Now. I've got a good solid position, I'm in a strong position, I'm not gonna crank, right? When we're in training, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna get here, I'm gonna hold, pinch, exercise control. Adam might give me a, a try to fight Adam for a second. If for some reason he doesn't know how to or if he's not able to, he is then going to tap, right? He's gonna, that's it, no more, right? And me, I'm not gonna crank and pop my partner's heel, you know, to try to get this win. And to understand this, when I first started training jiu-jitsu, I was in the time period where leg locks were evil. They were bad, they were nasty, you weren't supposed to do them. Like my coach, I would hear people's coaches say to them like if they, like if someone got an ankle lock to win, they would ask this kid when he got off the mat, hey, why didn't you pass the guard, pussy? Right, like that kind of thing. That, that shit would happen all the time. But you know, things change and you sort of get rid of old consistent ideas. And for me personally, I, we've trained leg locks more and more and more in the gym and our actual injury rate has dropped dramatically. Um, I know for me, like I train with Chad a lot, we do leg locks. He actually just won a match with a leg lock in about 15 seconds and we train leg locks every week and neither one of us ever actually injured each other with a leg lock because we catch, we get sensitive to the position and we tap when we know we need to tap. So for you guys that say that leg locks are dangerous, I understand that you might have that belief. I did too. But I would, I would just invite you to try to train them more and more often because what I found is that one, the more that you get educated with them, the more you become more sensitive to them. Just like any other submission, you know what's going on. You have escapes for it. You know how to apply them safely, all these things. And you have good training partners. They're a viable submission, obviously. And at the same time, you can train them in an incredibly safe way without doing damage to your body. So again, just... Just a thought, guys, I'm just sharing that with you because, again, this is something I used to have. I grew up in a time period where it started jiu-jitsu in a time period where leg locks were evil, they were bad, and I think that some people still hold on to that idea, but, again, for me personally, I've changed that because I've sort of trained with them more and more, and I realize that that's not the way that they are. So they're just like any other submission. They're all dangerous. You just got to be smart with them. Adam? Adam.